Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to look at General Electric, ticker symbol GE. So first, we're going to break down the basics of GE's business, and then we're going to look at some recent news that has come out. And then finally, we're going to see if we could value GE stock using discounted free cash flow. And then hopefully, we can use this analysis to see if GE is a good buy today and to see if it's worth adding to our portfolio. Okay, so let's jump in. So GE breaks their revenue into two main segments, GE Capital and GE Industrial. Now, if we want, we can break their industrial segment into four additional segments. They have aviation, healthcare, renewable energy, and then power. And we can see that for each of their segments, aviation is the largest, but each of their segments are fairly well diversified. They have a, they're in a lot of different places. But not everything is great right now, as many of us may have heard. So this is GE's revenue going back to 2003. And as we could see, well, revenue has been drifting lower ever since the financial crisis. In the beginning, things were sort of moving higher. And then once the financial crisis hit, well, GE began to lose revenue like many other companies. But impressively or disappointingly, really, they never managed to recover. And clearly, they've continued to drift lower even in the past 12 months. And to go one step further, if we switch over to free cash flow, well, now we can see that with free cash flow, they once again were drifting lower. But just recently, have they gone positive? They went negative from 2016 through 2018. And hopefully that was the bottom. But they have recently gone positive. Over the past 12 months, GE was able to post up about $2.8 billion in profit. Uh, not profit, free cash flow. Now, that's not a bad thing, but that's a far cry from the $32 billion they put up back in 2008. So clearly, this has been a long, gradual decline. Okay, so this is probably a good spot for some recent news in General Electric. So over the past few days, we might have seen some headlines that look like this. And basically, what they're saying is GE was fined $200 million for misleading investors. Now, in my opinion, this actually doesn't tell the whole story. So back in 2019, a guy named Harry Markopoulos, he was the guy who, he was the whistleblower on Bernie Madoff long before Bernie Madoff actually got caught. Uh, Markopoulos was calling him out on his scheme being a fraud for many years. But then back in 2019, well, Markopoulos puts together a presentation saying that GE was a fraud. And I actually did a video about that presentation on the day that it came out. And I was a bit torn with that one. On one hand, Harry Markopoulos had a good reputation. He has a good reputation. And there was no indication that he was lying. But on the flip side, he was being paid at that time by a hedge fund who was said to, uh, I assume, short the stock. They were going to profit if the stock went down. So stock, options, whatever they had done. But he did say that he had a monetary incentive if the stock went lower. Now, I released that video on the day that that happened. So I didn't have a ton of time to reflect on it. Really, what I did is I read through Marco Polis's presentation. And it was really like a, a lengthy PowerPoint presentation. I read through that presentation and then basically made a video that day. And my primary takeaway at that time was that the story seemed a bit exaggerated. In fact, in that video, I, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below if you're curious. But in that video, Marco Polis compared GE to Enron. Which, by the way, after Enron uh, was called out on being a fraud, within a couple of years, they were bankrupt. So this was a big deal that Marco Polis was calling GE basically the same thing. And then the one that really bothered me was that he compared GE to Bernie Madoff. And this was the exact slide from Marco Polis's presentation. And here he compares GE's profit margins to uh, Madoff's annual return. And to me, those are completely incomparable. Those two, they're not even close to the same business. You can't do that. To claim that GE is a fraud, at least partially based on the fact that hit their profit margins were better than Bernie Madoff's 12% return, their profit margins too, he points out that they're talking about the industrial segment. How does that make them at all a fraud? How is that even suspicious? What about Honeywell? Honeywell's an industrial company. Their profit margins are 17%. How about 3M? Their profit margins are 17% as well over the past 12 months. But back in 2018, which is the numbers he would have used, they were 19%. So if anything, GE's industrial segment is on the low end of comparisons to an actual company that would do the same thing. So to put together a slide like this seemed very suspicious to me that he was sort of 
over-exaggerating the story. Now, I'm not saying that GE did nothing wrong. Clearly, they did. They were just fined $200 million for doing something wrong. But the difference, they, so this in the settlement with the SEC, basically what they got fined for is inadequate disclosures around their power business and their long-term care insurance business. But my point with the whole Marco Polis report was that the difference between inadequate disclosures and Birdie Madoff is a drastic difference. One company pays a fine, the other one gets sentenced to 150 years in jail. Now, what inadequate disclosures do mean, in my mind, is that it makes, or at least made back then, investing in GE very difficult to justify. Had Marco Polis done this as a public service, and then people, in theory, were more informed, and then they could get out of the stock if they want to, or they could use that information to consider whether or not they wanted to get involved with the stock, then that would have made a ton of sense. I think if he had done that, you wouldn't have seen slides like this, which in my mind are clearly, they appear to be there to m sort of cause a panic sell-off. And since we know that a hedge fund was backing them and they were going to profit if the stock did sell off, that seems very, very suspicious to me. Now, further news articles came out later in the year, later in 2019 and early 2020, saying that Marco Polis was wrong with it. He was right fundamentally that there wasn't enough disclosures, but he was wrong with how far it all went. And that was really ultimately my point, is that I do believe that the, for, uh, the inadequate disclosures is important to know about, but if the company corrects that now, that doesn't make them completely uninvestable like Enron or Bernie Madoff would have been. Now, the good news is that in 2018, Larry Culp took over as the CEO of GE, and it seems that he's doing a pretty good job of trying to clean up the company. GE recently allocated about $4 billion towards their pension liabilities and towards debt reductions. And that's a good thing because their pensions have been underfunded for a while. So frankly, I think it's about time that they're doing this. So I'm glad Larry Culp is doing, going down that road. Now, as far as their debt is concerned, well, this is a chart of their debt, once again, going back many years. And we can see that as of now, debt seems to be heading in the right direction. So with that being said, is GE stock worth buying today? Well, I actually put together a free cash flow calculation using analyst estimates going out the next few years. And one point to consider is that notice in 2020, free cash flow is expected to be negative. And it's probably not too surprising considering that the coronavirus has hurt many, many businesses. For example, I'm sure we're not surprised that 2020 uh, GE's aviation segment is really going to get hurt. So I'm not too surprised that that would happen. And it looks like analysts are expecting that the years after that, they'll go positive once again. So using those free cash flow estimates and discounted by a required rate of return of 7.5%, grow it out by perpetual growth rate of 2.5%, and we end up with a fair value for GE stock of about $12 a share. Now I know that I sort of flew through the whole discounted free cash flow calculation, and I didn't really explain how it's all working or why, what numbers are important. And that's because I actually did a video, an entire video on how to do this calculation. This is an Excel template you're welcome to have. I'll leave a link in the description below to how to do that calculation. Discount of free cash flow is a great way to value a stock. So using those numbers, well, we end up with a fair value for GE stock of $12 a share. But we just looked at debt, so we're going to want to take into account debt. So when we add the impact of debt, well, now we can see that the debt adjusted calculation actually also lands GE stock at about 12 bucks a share. And if we look really closely at the total company valued, total company value versus the debt adjusted value, which is the value of just the stock value of equity, well, we can see that the number actually went up from about $104 billion to $108 billion. And that's because on GE's most recent quarterly report, most recent quarterly report, well, they actually have more cash and cash equivalents on hand than they have short and long-term debt. So you're going to get a slight pop in it. Not enough to move the stock price, but again, it's about 12 bucks a share. So our question is, should we buy GE stock today? Well, this is a chart of GE, and we can see that right now it's about $11 a share. It's a bit over, I think it's about 11.20 last I saw it. And I think that $12 a share, although it is higher, it's simply not enough of a margin of safety for a company like GE, given their SEC troubles. And there's a few lawsuits around some of the fraud allegations that have come out. So those are likely to be settled as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see more settlements out of court. 
point is, there's a lot of risk. So buying it with just a dollar of upside, assuming we believe that's what the fair value is, to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe if it gets back to six or seven dollars a share, well, it could make sense then because then at least we have a decent margin of safety. Now, if we already own this stock, well, I'd probably just stay sitting, holding and waiting to see what happens, especially if we had the foresight to buy back when Marco Polis wrote his report. Back then, this is the time period that Marco Polis wrote his report. Right on that dip right there, that was the day that he came out with the news. The stock dropped to about $8 a share. Well, if we had bought this stock back when GE, when Marco Polis first issued his report on GE, we'd be up over 40% right now. So if we had that foresight, I'd still be sitting here waiting because I wouldn't want to pay taxes on the capital gains that we've earned so far. And I do think that GE has a solid business, but I do think it's going to be a long turnaround time. So if we don't own it, I think it makes sense to wait for a pullback. If we do, I would just sit and wait, see where it goes. This could be a very good long-term hold at the right price. I do not think it's at the right price right now. Another thing to watch for with any of our investments is I think it makes sense to be very careful of red flags for fraud. There are ways to identify whether or not companies are fudging their numbers or stretching the truth a little bit. So if you're curious, I actually did a video where I go through eight, regs, eight red flags to identify fraud. If you're curious, perhaps that could be a good next video for you to watch. I got a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.